Raven Saunders um, is a United States Olympian. And the commentators of the BBC channel, well, they made a mistake by apparently referring to Raven as she. And one was quickly, quickly corrected by the other, suggesting that the Olympics goes by they, them, and is actually non-binary. I got two words for you. Bite me. Binary this. Let's see some of this. This is Raven Saunders wearing some kind of insane mask. It's good to see her back, sort of. Raymond Saunders is actually non-binary. They, them. Oh, shut up. Shut the hell up. She's a woman. She got a JJ. She's a woman. Just stop with all this stupid stuff. Can you imagine? Can you imagine a world where you can't even say somebody is she in the Olympics when she is competing in the women's division of the Olympics? You know, this isn't the gay Olympics. This isn't the LGTB ABCD Olympics. This isn't the Queers Olympics, which I saw is coming, by the way. That's the name. No, this is the Olympics. Greece, ancient Rome, you name it, the L.A. Coliseum. And there we go. But you're not allowed to say uh, they, them, because this clown decides that she wants to wear a mask. Before a shot put competition, Raymond Saunders transferred into her alter ego, the Hulk. That includes a mask, sunglasses, gold teeth, hair dyed green and purple, and long bedazzled nails. Now that's something I can get down with. I got no problem with that. A little individual individuality. Did I say that right? Probably not because, well, I don't even know why I couldn't say individuality. Eh, it is what it is. I, I don't mind that at all. I'm not that bad at all. But there she is, and I'm going to say she. You don't like it? Tough. Big deal. You're a she. You got a JJ, you got a rack, you're a she. Don't at me with it either. Don't at me about it. Now, the the goofy stuff, you know what? Eh, great. She likes to wear a mask while competing. Eh, great. Some people like to wear masks during sex. Some people like to wear capes when they go out at night. I don't care what you do. Hell, uh, Brian Bosworth, Deion Sanders. Remember Jackie Joyner Kersey? She had the long fingernails and all that going. I mean, it's historical. People want to compete in those type of outfits. That's cool. Why do I complain about that? Or why would I complain about that? I don't care about it. But don't tell me you're not a woman. And just shut up with that. And anyone that goes along with it is totally full of shit. Or brainwashed. Or both. Look. The idea that a woman competing in the Olympics as a woman isn't a woman or shouldn't be referred to as a woman is insanity. You know, our boss, Clay Travis, uses the word insanity all the time when describing this. And at first I thought, well, maybe that's a little harsh. Maybe it's a little secluded. Maybe it's just a group. No, 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 no. This is out and out insanity. And I'm going to spell it out for you once again. This would be like the third time. In the Olympics, in the women's division, the commentators said, can we put that tweet back up? The commentators said she. Again, in the women's division, in the Olympics, BBC commentator at the Olympics, it's good to see her back, sort of. What's the sort of? Well, it's in reference to her wearing a mask because you don't really see her. It's good to see her back, sort of. Raven Saunders is actually non-binary. Well, then go in the non-binary category. Go. Is there a non-binary category? They, them. Uh, Eat me. How's that? That's my category. That's my pronouns. F off. Go USA. That's my pronouns because I'm I'm non-binary. I got to tell you. Thank God for OutKick, because most won't report on this, number one, and others will think it's just awesome. Oh, my God, I just love it. I love it, love it, love it. Look what she's doing. She's non-binary. No, she got a JJ. She's a chick. She's competing in the women's division. She's a chick. If she's non-binary, then she could not or should not be able to compete. It is fascinating, though. It really is. 
it's fascinating how the world has adopted all this crap. And look, you can go the other way. You can say it's fascinating how old, fat, bald, white guy hasn't adopted this crap. But I go to what I said in the beginning. I do understand. I do get it. I know I look like 10 miles of bad old road, but actually inside here, a child that pays attention to everything and actually is very open-minded. I am. I listen to both sides. There is no other side to this. There's no other side to this. There isn't, well, you just don't understand the world we live in. That's how we are. We're non-binary. We don't identify. I don't give a damn what you identify. God made you a girl. You're a girl. God made you a boy. You're a boy. You don't like it? Eh. What are you going to do? Do it within your own community. That's cool, man. I mean, if a bunch of people want to walk around and say, I'm non-binary, I'm not a woman, I'm not a man, I'm a cat. Awesome. But don't bring it to the Olympics. That's just stupid. That makes you look stupid, NBC. That makes you look stupid, BBC. That just makes the Olympics look stupid. I mean, can't we just have one thing? Nah, probably not. It's just stupid. Hey, Charles Barkley, Sir Charles, friend of the show, has confirmed recent reports suggesting that he won't be retiring from television following the upcoming NBA season. Now, before I move it along, remember, Charles is my age. 62 years old. He's got more money than he'll ever spend, okay? You come to a crossroads when you're my age. I don't have more money than you ever spend, but you got enough to retire. Do you want to keep working or don't you? And at what level? See, my brother wants to work and work and work till he's 100 years old. He don't, He's like, hey, I ain't retired, man. I'm too much fun. He's found a second career developing cities, doing all this great stuff. I want to work and work and work doing this. Because this is fun. But I don't necessarily say to myself, I won't work till I'm 100. My brother's like, I'm done. There are certain things that I would like to do, but the truth of the matter is, Charles Barkley, guys like my brother, they can do whatever it is they want to do because they got FU money. And I'm digging that. But even without FU money, a lot of people want to retire and a lot of people want to continue to work. I'm one of those. I want to work. I don't want to kill myself, and Charles Barkley doesn't kill himself, but he does work pretty damn hard when you think about it. I mean, he is not not as hard as cops or teachers or guys. I always use mill workers. My whole neighborhood had dads. They all worked in a steel mill or were teachers like my father. But I got to tell you, I got to tell you, uh, good for Charles, but after one more year, it'll be interesting. Let me continue. He will instead stay on board with TNT. And it turns out that TNT doesn't seem to care about the stark reality that the network will be facing after this season, saying they will continue to do inside the NBA despite losing the rights. You know, I thought about that. Why wouldn't you just do the show? Now, would it cause you not to watch? I don't know. See, their show isn't really based on highlights. Or their show isn't really based on half times of a game. I would almost argue, probably not, but almost, that as many people watch halftime as they do the actual game on a random Wednesday or Friday night, whatever nights they have it. I don't know. I think the NBA on ESPN is Friday, and TNT has other nights. But I would argue that you could do that show in a time slot before an NBA game, let's say 7 o'clock, And I don't know the highlight, I don't know the copyright laws, but I would argue people would tune in. That would be fascinating to see, really. It really would. And I don't blame. Good for Charles. That would be more fun anyway. But anyway, here's what Charles has to say. TNT, I told you they had to come meet with me. Uh, They flew to Philly uh, last week. And I said, what's what's the deal? And they said, hey, uh, we're going to keep doing the show. And I'm like, what? And they're like, we're going to keep doing the show. What does that mean? uh, (laughs) That's what I said. (laughs) That's that's what I said, man. Okay. Okay. So, so I said, Hey, y'all know, y'all know my number one priority is to keep people working at Turner. That's always been my number one priority. And Dan, they said they're going to keep doing the show. And uh, I said, "Do I, I'll take a pay cut. I said, I'll take a pay cut. He said, that's not necessary. 
And they said, we're going to continue doing the show. I don't have any idea what that means. Wait, you had to ask them when they said that, that what do you mean after this season, we're going to continue to do the show? And they well, said I think, what? I think they're going to try to figure it out. Uh, I mean, because we won't have the NBA. Uh, so I think they're going to try to figure it out. But my number one concern, Dan, has always been the people at Turner. See, that's what I've always said about him. He's a great, great, great teammate. And I believe him. Like, I don't believe a lot of guys. Like, if Shaq said that, I'd be like, yeah, okay, it's Shaq. He's just stupid. He's just talking. He's not stupid, but he's just talking. But when Charles would say it, I'd be like, yeah. Yeah, I can get down with that. And good for him. And look, I don't know. Maybe we'll put it out to a poll, but I got to believe NBA fans would tune in. Now, here's the thing that you get into. When you're doing a regular show, <clears throat> the vibe of the whole thing is different. I don't know why it just is, as opposed to doing a halftime show. When you do a regular show, it is scripted. It is all this kind of stuff. When you do a halftime show, it's a little bit more free-flowing because you're reacting in many times to the game. And that's a deal. It's not a deal breaker. It doesn't mean people won't watch. But the one thing you also got to be careful of here is, well... They have a great legacy. They do. A great legacy. You don't want to see that tarnished. Although, if you think about what Charles said, um, what Charles said was this. He said, I just want people to work, continue to work. And he's been very consistent, which means the legacy doesn't matter. You know, like Charles did a show with Gail King on CNN. I don't know. It lasted what? A month, two, three months, I don't whatever. <clears throat> Nobody talks about it because Charles is kind of bigger than that. Hey, he's so big, all right, he had a show fail. Who cares? No, I'm glad they're back. It's the only thing I watch. I wish, I wish they were on every network during, during, during the NCAA tournament and before. Like ESPN doesn't have anybody in college basketball that you turn on at halftime other than Seth Greenberg. And you go, all right, I'm interested to hearing what he's got to say. He doesn't have anybody fun. Doesn't have anybody that makes it great energy. They just don't ever since I left. And that, I guess, doesn't matter because they're trying to fill inventory. They're trying to put a show on to fill time. DEI hires, that nature. Not this show. Not inside the NBA. Inside the NBA is its own entity. Like, name me the sponsor of ESPN's halftime shows during the college basketball season. You can't because it's also nondescript. But you know the name of inside the NBA. You know what they're about. You do. And that is pretty cool, and I'm glad that they are continuing it. Um, Stephen A. Smith is well aware of accusations that he's a company man. And when it comes to those who paint him as, as I see Stephen A. Smith doesn't like him because Stephen A. Smith's a rebel. Yeah, okay. Uh, the first take star has quite the response, and they're also, well, he's saying they're all full of shit. People who feel that way are full of shit. They all answer to someone. You think you can go on YouTube and just do what you want to do? The notion that someone goes out there and doesn't have to answer to anyone, well, that's a flat-out lie. See, the question that he is answering is in response, even though it's not, to Pat McAfee. There's bad blood between the two of them. I don't know. Th I don't think this. I know this. There's bad blood, not from McAfee's side, but there's jealousy from Stephen A. Smith because McAfee runs his own shop. McAfee has his own producers. McAfee has his own set. McAfee's equipment, according to Pat's dad, who told me at a wedding, was so much better even than what ESPN uses. They brought in ESPN stuff and said, now we're going to use our own. McAfee doesn't need it. And at the end of the day, McAfee makes Stephen A. Smith crazy. I mean crazy. Documentary's coming out. Smith will be bad-mouthing. He's trying to get it changed. There's a whole mess with that thing. Hell, it may even be out. 
I don't know, it's summertime. I'm golfing. I'm rolling around in the grass with Lee. You know what I'm saying. I'm not really paying attention. But the fact of the matter is this makes Smith nuts. Insane. Now, the fact of the matter is also ESPN isn't smart enough to understand that they hold all the leverage to all of these guys. They're making a little money off Smith, but that's not their bread and butter. Their bread and butter is games. They can fit anybody in those shows, and eh, you'll get sponsors because it's ESPN. Pat may be a different deal, and it's not his show on television. In fact, somebody told me the other day that his show is rating lower than what SportsCenter did. I don't know if I believe that. I just know that's what I was told, but that's there. And this is what makes McAfee so cool. That's there. That's ESPN's now. Where McAfee gets it done for everybody is linear, YouTube, all the other stuff. And, yes, absolutely Stephen A. Smith is right. You know, we got this show off YouTube and on the Outkick because YouTube doesn't like conservative stations. It doesn't like conservative content. It limits it. I had no understanding of that, but I work with some really smart people. Aaron and Gary spelled it out as Well, as simply as they can, because see this brain, it doesn't understand stuff. It only understands straightforward, blah, 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 blah. So Stephen A. Smith is right. He's absolutely right. Even on YouTube, you got to answer to somebody. you got to answer to the gods of YouTube. But he's jealous as hell, and it's making him crazy what's going on with McAfee. I'm a fan and admirer of his, but when Joe Rogan got into trouble years ago, He was number one for a mile in the podcast stratosphere. So why was he in trouble? He had someone to answer to. If you're paid with someone else's money, so do you. No individual is bigger than a conglomerate. No person that is free is the person that ain't getting paid. Uh, Yes and no. Whether it's you're all, I'm using my brother. My brother's company, I suppose, is beholden to his clients. However, they're more beholden to him because he's the guy doing the job. And my brother's the CEO of the company, so I'm sitting here thinking, I don't think they have a board. So I'm sitting here thinking, huh, who is he beholden to? I certainly am beholden. Because when I screw up and talk about dumb things that maybe I shouldn't, I'll get a text from Gary or Aaron saying, hey, dummy, don't talk about that. I get it. I do. But in Stephen A. Smith, he's right. And Joe Rogan didn't get in trouble by any bosses or anything like that. Joe Rogan got in, quote, trouble by the woke community that tried to bury him. They didn't like what he said. In fact, Joe Rogan is dealing with that right now off of his special. His special is causing, oh, my God, he didn't kiss our ass. He didn't kiss our ass. He didn't do it. No, he didn't do it. And as the LGTABCDEFG community, you must kiss our ass. If you make jokes, we're offended. If you make jokes, you're putting people in danger, which is all crap. Of course it's crap. But that's all right. That's the world we're living in. And Joe Rogan thumbs his nose at it. Maybe Joe Rogan has a boss. I suppose Spotify or wherever his stuff is could flip the switch and turn him off. But sure don't seem like it. Same thing with McAfee. Nothing wrong with being a company man as long as you like the company. I love this company. I do. I don't kind of like it. I love it. They stand for the right thing. They give you freedom to talk about stuff no one else does, to dig into issues no one else will. I didn't like ESPN, but I liked working there. Let me say that again. I didn't like the company and what they were about, but I liked working there. Going to games was fun. The money they paid got my kids through college, got me a new house. What's the not like? I didn't like the place. I mean, you walk around and everybody's nervous. You walk around and everybody's like, don't say anything to anybody because of all the books and stuff that have been written about the guys before being jackasses. And you knew the people that you worked for were full of shit. Yeah, you did. But as long as you knew it was all right, but going to games, doing games, what's not fun about that? Sitting there at ESPN in the studios, that's fun while you're on the air, not so much after. I get what he's saying, though. And he is the ultimate company man. I mean, he works for the man. He's bringing in a ton of cash for the man, all while getting him. And ain't a damn thing wrong with that. 
Because basically, baby, everybody does. Uh, Just when you thought people like Colin Cowherd were coming around, just when you thought, oh, baby, here we go. And I love Cowherd. I do. Cowherd is one of my idols. Cowherd is one of my, not idols, broadcasting uh, mentors without him even knowing it. See, I like his style. I like Tony Kornheiser's style. Loved it, actually. Kornheiser was actually more, and then when Cowherd replaced Kornheiser, I liked it. But I don't understand how people can be this way. I, not in the modern era. So Cowherd basically saw, and this is what I've told you was going to happen. I'm going to back up a second. I told you that conservatives have to be incredibly careful how they are depicting Kamala Harris. They have to be. If you continue to show Kamala Harris laughing, giggling, smiling, if you continue to show her in dresses being pretty, because she is a pretty woman, then guess what? The American people are going to go that direction. They did it with Jimmy Carter. We're suckers for a good time, and she seems like a good time. Now, if you go to the issues and the fact that she's the dumbest human being ever to run, and you go to whatever you want to go to, she doesn't measure up. And Cowherd fell for it. Cowherd praises the ultra-awful, not my words, my flying Knicks, vice president, for smiling more than Trump. I told you weeks ago that this was going to happen. I did. I told you weeks ago. Let's listen to Cowherd. Because it's an election year, and increasingly we're being fed doomsday scenarios, and people want to be happy. So people are putting down their phones and turning on something that makes them feel happy. Caitlin Clark, Copa America, the Summer Olympics. Americans are much more united than anybody on their iPhone would acknowledge, but that's hard to sell. We really all want the same things, but we watch different news channels for it. But people are tired of the angst. This weekend, I turned on CNN. Didn't, didn't plan to, but they had a Kamala Harris special. It was like two hours. I didn't plan to watch it. But what I noticed between her and the other guy running is she smiled a lot. She was happy. She laughed. It wasn't constant finger pointing and grievance. And I found myself sitting there for two hours. It was kind of uplifting. It didn't really matter because I don't know much about Kamala Harris other than what I read, but it was like uplifting. And that's why I'm watching so much of the Olympics. And I watch so much of Copa and the Euros on Fox. Yesterday, I went, I went to lunch with my daughter. It was a nice day out. All I saw, young couples, smiles, dogs, fun, people laughing, playing ping pong outside. People were happy. You would never know that if you sit staring at your iPhone all day. So, oh, he's right about that. I mean, I, 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 well, I don't know. I, I, I've talked about that forever. No, I've talked about that forever. I mean, sitting there and I'm do, I'm guilty as hell because I feel like I got to stay up on it for five hours. I do this show, then the next one, and then at night I got to be up on it to know the next day. But you're absolutely right. Go outside, roll around in the grass, look out my back window. People are happy. I agree. But that doesn't mean I'm going to vote for somebody just because they're smiling. You know, people are happy. We live in the greatest country in the history of the world. But the truth of the matter is we have real crises going on. So you can be happy and move it along. See, here's where, here's where Colin Cowherd gives himself away. He couldn't even say Trump's name. I watched a Kamala Harris for two hours, he said. She was smiling. She was laughing. More than who? The other guy. So it, again, is just a guy in the media that's a crazy far left guy that is talking about things to help the far left. Can't even say Donald Trump's name, the former president, the billionaire, who probably along the way helped ESPN get established. So thus, he probably helped Colin Cowherd get to where he is in some weird way. That's the giveaway. If somebody said and was honest, like most of us are here, oh, I don't know, I haven't met anybody that isn't at OutKick, 
you would understand the code words. When they can't say his name, that tells you they're far left crazy because anybody with common sense or is a moderate goes, hey, Kamala Harris is running against Donald Trump. You know, far right crazy people, I can't even say her name. Well, you're an idiot. Donald Trump is running against that woman. I can't. That's stupid. What are you doing? No, say each other's name. Look at the details. Look at the details. Like, Republicans didn't get a border bill crossed. Well, because a lot of the money there was going to go to Ukraine, and they don't want to pay Ukraine. But we don't look at the details. Oh, people are out happy and singing and bursting with love. That's great. Awesome. Hopefully that doesn't end for them as we let millions in. But I get what he's saying, and I told you this. I've told you this. You know, this is not just a pretty face. Basically, everything I tell you is going to come true. And I told you, remember Jimmy Carter? He won with a smile. How you do? Then he got in office, and people weren't so happy. There were gas lines. There was inflation. <clears throat> Iran was kicking our ass. Iraq was kicking our ass. Hell, I don't even know the difference. I was 17 years old, and I felt like both of them were kicking our ass. They were hanging our people in their street. Food prices through the roof. People lost a lot. So, yeah, they were happy, man, but then they took their eye off the ball and went with a smile. Jimmy Carter, how you doing? Hey, 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 how you doing? Yeah, they did. Don't do it again. That's bad business. Don't do it again. Please be smarter than that. Please, por favor. Hey, former Bucks player Patrick Beverly, he is one of the, God dang, again with him, guys? He wants fans to stop acting like CNN reporters trying to inform him about what's happening in Israel. The Arkansas Flash, who kicked my guy Eric Gordon's ass in an NCAA tournament game in 2008 that I coached for Indiana, and I've always kind of respected the guy, except he's crazy, said this. Early in the summer, Patrick Beverly made this surprising move to go to Israel, playing for Hopo Shlomo Tel Aviv. He's now openly addressed his move and the matters related to him. Beverly will travel to Bulgaria this month. Well, he'll stay at a training camp until August 19th. Then the team will move to Tel Aviv. Then they will travel to Belgrade, Serbia. 36-year-old guard admitted receiving a lot of message on social media people being against his move to Israel, which is currently involved in a couple conflicts in the Middle East. People tell me, hey, you know, it's war. Oh, okay, cool. You been there? You seen it? Or you're just hearing about stuff? that you see on TV. It's mind-boggling to me that everyone all of a sudden is a CNN reporter. Did you know? Did you know? Did you know? That's all I hear. I talked to an American that played there. He's not currently on the team. It's paradise. Went to the beach every single day for six hours a day. I had no bad experience at all. I played basketball in paradise. Sounds pretty good to me. Although, here's the deal. You know, Palestine and Hamas and Israel, it's so split that people are going to say one side or the other. You know, for me, I'm 1,000% pro-Israel. I cannot get behind terrorists in any way, shape, or form, no matter who comes at me. But Patrick Beverly going to Israel is his business. And if people are legitimately concerned and want him to legitimately know, then that's cool. But we all know what this is. Everybody has a bias now. Oh, I'm pro-Hamas. How can you possibly be pro-Hamas? If you pay attention to anything, including CNN, and you saw the massacres, the bloodletting, the bloodlessness of the killers that went house to house, cutting off heads, cutting babies out of wombs, doing all kind of insanely sick stuff, and you support that, you're a jackass, you're evil, you're dangerous, and you should get the hell out of here and go join. See how long you last. It will be interesting. It's always interesting when an NBA guy that's been in the NBA for a long time goes somewhere like Tel Aviv. Many times it works out great. They're making money. They're on the beach at the end of their career. Think Stefan Marbury. He's got statues all over. I think it's China. Might be Japan, but I think it's China. I would guess Patrick Beverly's going to last the six months. I would bet Patrick Beverly's going to last the year, but something will happen. You know something will happen. He's one of those guys that something always happens. He's always in the news. Pac-Man Jones, always in the news. Not saying they're good, they're bad, they're happy, they're sad. Not saying any of them. Just saying that's who they are. There's a group of them. And it started, you know where I'm going with this, with Steve Howe, the pitcher for the Dodgers 
in the 70s, getting suspended seven times, and I'm the paper boy, and I read the paper, and I go, geez, this guy again? So I've always followed that. Always. Brian Bosworth. Hey, this guy suspended again? Always that guy. Good luck to you, though, Patrick Beverly. Respect, yo. Um, Lane Kiffin, he's also in the news all the time, is being sued by Dr. Keith Bell, a Texas-based swimming psychologist seeking damages from Kiffin for retweeting a passage from his book, Winning Isn't Normal, back in 2016. Now, to me, 2016 doesn't seem that long ago. But that's eight years. That's two going to colleges. That's two college careers. Two four-year college careers. It's a long time ago. What's the problem? The doctor is seeking damages who has a yearly salary at Ole Miss of $8.75 million on the grounds of one count of copyright infringement. The lawsuit says Kiffin's leaving up his infringing post is irrefutable evidence of willful infringement although the post in question appears to have been deleted. So, summarizing from the allegations laid out, one of the most popular coaches in American sports appears to be a big fan of a suit and book. He shared passages from said book with 682,000 followers on Twitter, but since he didn't give proper credit, he's being sued by the owner. Lighten up, Francis. Just be happy someone's paying attention to your silly-ass book. Just be happy somebody's actually read your winning isn't normal book. I mean, it's amazing to me. Winning isn't normal. The power of saying no. I mean, you go down these self-help aisles. If I were Dr. Keith Bell, and I hesitate to talk about this because he's very litigious, I'd be like, hey, that's great. I hope somebody gets it. Uh, Joy Reid, she's another one of the folks that's like, what now? What now? Joy Reid in the news, still not sure how she's employed at MSNBC, but she is. She goes on yet another racist rant, cheering that Tim Waltz is white, but he's not a mayonnaise sandwich. Whatever the that means. Here it is. Here's Joy Reid. Got to be honest and keep it real. This is not the pick that I expected that she would make. It did come down to the final three, as we understand it, uh, and I thought she would go astronaut keeping it real he to me would have been the safest most conventionally safe pick uh white uh super white like you know mayonnaise sandwich on wonder bread white um from the you know from a border state he could have made a strong argument for her yeah i mean good for joy reed a mayonnaise sandwich a mayonnaise sandwich all right I guess. I mean, how is she still employed? I just got to, I just, if speaking of suing somebody, Stephen Tracy, I know you're broke, so come on, five grand. Someone needs to slap some sense into you. All right. Keep posting the same pics, you brainwashed. Mm-mm. I'll give you credit. You're definitely a professional Mm-mm, writer. All right. Guys want to fight Double Dizzle. Joy Reid stays employed, and guys want to fight me. No, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing how the world works. Guys want to fight me for $5,000. Don't fight me for $5,000. I'm 62 years old. There's no dignity in getting your ass whipped for $5,000. There isn't. And I'm not putting up $5,000 to fight somebody. I'll fight them for free. That's how I roll. What a ridiculous conversation. Back to Joy Reid. If you said or I said or anybody said anything like that, guess what would happen? We'd be fired tomorrow. Yeah, we would. Be fired tomorrow. But somehow, some way, this woman keeps her job, which tells you not necessarily about her. It tells you about her network. Now, I don't know what she has on that network, but any self-respecting white, black, Asian, I don't care what you are, dude, would absolutely have to have a conversation with her that involves clean your stuff up and get out of here. But you know what? It points to her harmlessness. It parts to her irrelevancy. If she were somebody that was relevant, that's what would happen. There'd be an outcry. There'd be an uproar. But she's not. She's looked at as a pathetic figure. 